Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Choose to Think podcast. You are tuning in on a Monday, or at least that's when this episode has dropped. And we are in the middle of a series called Choose to Think About Your Physical Health. And we launched a couple of weeks ago. We started with water. We talked about green tea. We've talked about the, perhaps the world's greatest, most wholesome snack you could ever munch on, which would be popcorn, organic popcorn, no oil popped, popped like with the air or in the microwave is what I, the way I do it. And then olive oil and nutritional yeast, that kind of snack. And today we're going to talk about something that you've long heard about. Matter of fact, it's one of the most popular selling supplements in the world and has been for a while. And it's not going to catch you by surprise, but you may need a little bit of a refresher like, like I did on what it's all about and why it's so important to your health. We're going to talk about omega-3s. And by the way, you can see me in the way I'm dressed right now. I am like in a jacket and a sweater and then another sweater. And if you're hanging out on YouTube, if you would hit that subscribe button, also the bell notification so that you'll know when we're when anything is is popped onto our channel, we would so appreciate that. And but anyway, I am like dressed for this right when the weather starts dipping like this, I just get so cold. It's so cold. So I know I'm dressed like I'm, you know, about to go out into the Arctic weather, but one the, the product we're talking about and the one that I'm endorsing, I want to show you in a minute. If you'll stay tuned to the end, I want to tell you the my favorite omega-3 to buy, and I'll tell you why I buy it as well. And I'll put the link in the show notes. But it my dress kind of has something to do with this particular product that I'm going to tell you about a little bit later. So thank you so much for tuning in. I know you've got a gazillion things to do in your day, but there's something that keeps you coming back. And I've had so many positive responses on the health series. This choose to think about your health. And if there's anything we really need to choose to think about, that is one area. It's one of those buckets, right, in our life. We've got our health, our wealth, our faith and spirituality, our relationships, love, those sorts of things. We've got all these different buckets, our emotions and our psyche. That would be one also. And we can't neglect the health one. And you know what? We're going we're gonna to finish out this year strong. 2021, we're going to finish it out strong. And we're not going to wait until January 1, 2022 to start making good food health choices, health, healthy food choices. We're not going to wait. We, why would we do that? Because January 1 is just a calendar day anyway. So let's not get duped into that thought, right? Sometimes we use, our thoughts actually restrict us and they're kind of like excuses or justifications. Like, you know, I can't start this now. I'm just going to wait until January 1 because I'm going to, by golly, I'm going to get through Thanksgiving and Christmas. Or I'm, you know, I, I blew it. I blew it this weekend. So I'm going to start on Monday. You ever said that? Those are thoughts that are not healthy to your health. They're not productive for your health. They're not beneficial for your health. And I'm going to give you a few more thoughts that probably run interference with your living your very best thought life when it comes to your health. What about this one? I don't have time to get to the gym class. All right. Or I don't have time to work out. I don't like to go to the gym to work out. I don't have the money to invest in my health, like not that much anyway. I've always been a bit on the hefty side and I'm just resigned to being this side. I mean, I'm just going to be overweight the rest of my life. It runs in the family. Right. Have you ever thought these thoughts? How about this one? My doctor says that I, yeah, I should probably lose about 20 pounds, but he doesn't seem worried about it. So mm, here I am. How about this one, which is really limiting? I have tried everything and nothing works. Ever said that? Okay, how about this one? I'm not about to give up all the yummy holiday foods. No way. I mean, I deserve to splurge, especially then. You know, that kind of moral licensing that we give ourselves often in terms of our food choices and our physical health choices, all those choices and thoughts that we we engage in and choices we make, we tend to justify them. Food is my best friend. I really need this type of comfort. Ever said that? Some people I know recognize that they go to food for comfort 
and they're kind of unapologetic about it. They're like, eh, that's just what I do. So I guess the, the real point on this, when, when you have any of these thoughts, when I have any of these thoughts, we're going to have to go a little bit deeper and ask ourselves, do we really want to get well? Do we really want to be fit, fab, and 50-ish or fit, fab, and 30-ish? You know, if I could go back and redo things, you know, when I was having babies and having kids and uh, running hither and yawn, <sighs> yes, I wanted to be healthy, but it wasn't as important as it is now, I guess, if only it were. Now I can look at my daughters and like my biological daughter, my daughter's-in-law, and they are very health conscious. They make really, really, really good choices when it comes to their hair, far better than I did. I lived on M&Ms way back when, and that is the truth. I had M&Ms in my car. I had them in the house. I was, you know, that's all I had was M&Ms. And well, finally it caught up with me, right? With cholesterol and you know, just lethargy, depression, you name it, and being fatigued and just worn out. So let me just say that I feel like I'm going like 90 miles an hour right now, but it's because I'm so excited about the content. I'm so excited to share with you what really has been working for me. And I want to endorse products that I actually use that I can say, hey, I love this product. This is amazing. And this is why I've chosen this one. So and I want to tell you back to the whole thoughts thing, in case you think that it is impossible to change or to do whatever it takes to change, I'm going to encourage you to be like the rabbit in my backyard. Yes, you heard that right. There's a wild rabbit that lives back there. There might be a family of them. I don't know where they come from, but we have a, I have a little bit of a wooded area on the backside of my yard. My yard is fenced. And it's, you need to know, as I tell you this story, that it's fenced in with, with wire fencing. Like it has the big wooden uh, posts and the wooden planks, but then the people who own the house before I bought it, they, they also put over top all of that wire fencing and, or, you know, what do you call that? Just, you know, where they nailed it to every pole and they ran that wire around so that the dogs would stay in. It's perfect for Rico. Now he's so tiny that there are a few spots like at the bottom that I've had to put like bricks or something so that he can't scurry under. But at any rate, the wire that the wire fencing that they nailed onto all those poles and planks going across, they have they have openings that are two inches by six inches. And they actually go up this way. They're vertical, two inches by six inches. So I want you, that's going to be so important. I want you to think about that, two inches by six inches and how small that is. I could not fit my water bottle through there, I don't believe. Now I can just kind of barely get my hand through, but then, you know, kind of might get stuck coming back through. So very recently, I was taking Rico out and we always take him out to use the bathroom before we go to bed. Maybe it was around 11 o'clock or something like that. It was a really crisp, cool evening and the stars were out. It was just beautiful. I always like going out, but it's that very last time. And I was trying to really breathe deeply and get a lot of that good midway fresh oxygen into my lungs before I go try to, you know, go to sleep and go to bed. And so I use my phone as a flashlight because I have decking out the back and then you've got to go down, I don't know, maybe six or seven steps. And so Rico, you know, sometimes he, it's hard for him because he's so small to get up and down though. So he's shining the light on there so that he can see them. And so right when we started, we were just at the top getting ready to go down. I was shining the light down. And then on the, down by the base of the steps themselves, there was that a rabbit. And it looked like an adult-sized rabbit, you know, big eye, just one eye. It was kind of sta standing like, like an Easter bunny rabbit that you eat, the chocolate rabbit, you know, like that, that profile. And it was just standing there. And suddenly it realized, wait a minute, who are these people are coming? And then Rico spots this rabbit and is starting to try to scramble around and go really fast. Well, we got down, needless to say, that rabbit shot away just as fast as he could run. And he ran right into my fence. And I don't know whether he thought he could get through the fence or there was no fence. I don't know. All I'm telling you is that here I have Rico. Now I've picked Rico up and he's wailing around trying to get down. He's like, rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. And 
And all I hear, because it's dark and I'm trying to hold on to my phone and Rico and not fall down the steps and all of that, all I hear is this horrible sound of this poor little creature trying to get through my fence, through it. And it's this little teeny opening that he's inside of now. And I shine the light over there and I and I see his backside is he's just like he's halfway through it. His front side is through, so his front legs must have been through. But then, I mean, it's just scurrying up and down, making this rattling sound and kind of squeaking sound. And I felt horrible. I'm like, Lord, please do not make me rescue this rabbit. I do not know how to rescue a rabbit. I don't know if ra rabbits will bite me or if they're if it's healthy. I, what am I going to do? I'm just thinking, here it is, 11 o'clock. I can't call my beautiful, wonderful neighbor, Olivia, to have her help me. Now, I probably could have called Jagger. He would have come over. Um, he's the, the my neighbor's son across the street. They would have come over. Anyway, all that to say, I what of all the things I knew I needed to do was to get Rico back in the house. I did it. I came back out. The rabbit made it through. And it made me think, okay, let's think about the limiting thoughts we have regarding our own health and how we hold ourselves back and how we're maybe we're not motivated. Maybe we're, you know, like meh when it comes to all of these things. Maybe we haven't been scared yet. A lot of people I know turn their, their health around at the point they get scared. At the point, the doctor says, um, you got to go on this blood pressure medicine because this your, your blood pressure is too high. Or you have such high cholesterol or you've, you've got type 2 diabetes about to set in here. Uh, something's got to give. And so maybe you get that shocking news that that actually will you know, cause an impact on you so that you're like, OK, I'm going to make it through all right because I'm not going to let all this other stuff that I've been saying and all these excuses or justifications stand in the way anymore. By golly, I'm getting through that fence. There's no mountain now I wouldn't walk through. So maybe you've had that great aha moment and you're ready to put aside excuses. Now, I am not saying that everyone's making excuses or that you're justifying and I am not saying all of that. I wouldn't want to sit in judgment of that. Goodness, I mean, I have so on my own not taking care of my health at times. And I just see that my, my microphone is not plugged in. Oh, fiddles. I'll just use the computer one. It may not be the best quality, but that's okay because we believe at Choose to Think Ministries that done beats perfect. So there you go. <sighs> Where am I on this? excuses, justification. I'm not sitting in judgment of any of that. I know it's hard. I know you have children. I know you have families. I know you have limited time. You have grandchildren. I know you're trying to meet the demands of so many people, but maybe, just maybe, it's time for you to do a little self-care. And a part of that self-care may be that you need to take care of yourself when it comes to your physical health. All right. So today we're going to live our best thought lives. That's the whole purpose of this podcast is to live our best. Our be living our best life starts with living our best thought lives. And that's what we're aiming to do. So we're going to we're going to grab those thoughts that are running interference to your optimal physical health in the series. And we're going to say, no, it stops there. We're going to make a, a difference. We're going to change. We're going to do something. We're going to take back our health. And just because it's November doesn't mean we can't start. It's never too late to start doing what's right. Furthermore, hey, what if you start now taking care of yourself, drinking more water, putting the switching to green tea, having healthy snacks, ditching the sugar, and then adding omega-3s into your diet, you may be amazed at how you feel between now and December. And then January is going to come and you're going to be like, man, I'm on a groove now. I don't need some resolution. My resolution started in November. That's when I started. So boost up because of this. And if the doctor gives you news that scares you, okay, you're going to get through that. That's why the rabbit went through, right? He went through because he was scared spitless. 
and he was, he was like he thought he might die or I was gonna do something to him right he was fearful little creature and he made it through so that can also be you and it can start now so let's just get right into it and talk about what making this one tiny change in the right direction because yeah. a lot of us want to take a supplement and feel like we're doing better and what we're talking about today the omega-3s you can almost take a supplement and get better on this one it's there are food sources and we can consume those foods and we should consume the whole foods much better than any kind of supplement we can take but often we don't get enough omega-3s in our diet so it's very very helpful for us to have a supplement so at least that may make you feel better that hey this is a tiny change that i can make it's swallowing a pill and that's kind of easy a pill that's really going to help you all right so we're going to make sure that you get enough omega-3 fatty acids in your diet there are 11 types of fatty acids omega-3 fatty acids and these omega-3s are just a type of polyunsaturated fats okay and the three most important of those 11 are are ALA, EPA, and DHA. And I am not gonna try to pronounce all of those for you, but you've probably heard of those. I have at least heard of them before. And at the end of the show, we're gonna talk about what food source, natural food sources you can actually consume in order to get some of those fatty acids. Now, these are called essential fatty acids, mainly because we need them, but our body cannot manufacture them, essentially. So we have to rely on our diet or supplements in order to get them, all right? Now, ALA is the fatty acid that you're gonna get in a lot of plants and I'll tell you which ones a little bit later. And then EPA and DHA are prolific in fatty fish. I love to go to the healthline.com articles and they talk a lot about omega-3s and all the different fatty acids, the essential, the, the oils, the all the different types, the foods, the research behind it. And I love their articles also because you can just click, they have a lot of active live links that can take you to an, a related article. So um, I, I like reading, but truly what healthline.com presents is something that you can get in a gazillion other articles and other information on the web but but i'm going to take some of what they say and then combine it to give you a whole bunch of reasons why we need omega-3s and exactly what the health benefit is number one it can combat depression and anxiety depression rates are through the roof these days. So simply making sure we have ample, the, the, the needed omega-3s in our diet can really help with that. Number two, improve eye health. Number three, good to take during pregnancy because it's really good for brain health of your little baby, your growing baby, and even in early life. Number four, it helps to ward off heart attacks and strokes. All right, so you're, now you're thinking all the cardiovascular uh, benefits of alpha, of, I'm sorry, I always say alpha, I think I see, the Lord is the alpha and the omega, and so every time I'm talking about omega-3s or omega-6s, like popcorn is really high in omega-6, you know, the corn, but I, I always think of the, I always want to say alpha, because God is the alpha and the omega, the first and the last, so there you go, a little spiritual spin there. It, well, you know, the Bible does say that physical exercise is of some value. Spiritual discipline, though, is far more important than the physical aspect. But I was so grateful that Paul writes that because that that gives me more motivation to put out these health, you know, the, the health series because it is our health is important and it is our temple. So, OK, there was a digression off script, but at any rate heart attacks and strokes that the omega-3, if I say alpha, alpha omegas, then just pardon me, okay, so the omega-3s are so good for us, for our, for our heart, our brain and our heart, helps improve attention and focus, especially say for kids who have ADHD and those sorts of attention um, issues, now, I, this is number six, but I've never heard of metabolic syndrome, but if you're plagued with obesity, 
belly fat, high blood pressure, insulin resistance. If you have high triglycerides, think you're not all about the triglycerides and the HDL and the LDL. If you have really low, good cholesterol, and remember the good cholesterol is the HDL, the LDL is the bad. And, but if, you're, if your levels of the good are really, really low, then the omega-3s are, are certainly going to help with that. And that's one of the reasons I'm motivated to make sure I get some omega-3s in my diet. Number seven, fights inflammation. Thank goodness, soon we're going to talk about plantar fasciitis and just the issues with our feet. And what I, oh, I can't wait to tell you about plantar fasciitis. You know, they say the older you, you get, the more you just talk about your body. And that seems to be so true. It's like, oh, what are your aches today? I mean, even my friends and I would go out for coffee and all we're, we're talking about, you know, uh, how's your back? And and is your are your feet still hurting you? And then, no, I mean, that's just the way it is, right? But here we are cheering each other on, trying to, to live our best life, starting with our thought lives when it comes to our health. And now we're talking about why the omega-3s are so important and what we can do to help all these other body aches and woes that we may have, especially as we age. So fight inflammation, that's a biggie. You know what? I am sworn off of ibuprofen. I, I can't do it for my stomach. And even the, let's see, Advil, Aleve, Naproxen, ibuprofen, Tylenol, I don't even take that stuff anymore unless I just absolutely have to. And I, I can remember I've had tooth issues before and I just lived on ibuprofen for ages. But oh my goodness, I heard someone recently say that just one ibuprofen is like putting detonating a, a bomb in your belly, in your stomach because of what it does there. And so I want other natural ways to fight inflammation. And because inflammation, actually, we don't always wanna thwart it because it's our body telling us something and indicating that, hey, something's going on here and your body's naturally trying to send in the troops to heal that area. And if we just kind of reduce that process, it's almost like giving your kids, you know, when they have a viral cold and you give them something to break their fever. I always let mine cook. I told them, I'm gonna let you cook today because if I let them cook if I let them have that fever then and I'm not talking about drastically high fever and by the way while I'm thinking about it um, I, this show is not for medical purposes. It is educational only based on my personal experience. Victoria D. Walker, a podcaster in Midway, Kentucky, a 21st century Christian woman. You need to seek medical counsel and get that advice from your own doctor. Okay so there's that side note but I would let my children have that fever because they knew it was beneficial to them and I knew they wouldn't get up and play because if they had the ibuprofen they would feel better and or the Tylenol and then they would get up and play and their body really just wanted to lie around and rest and recuperate and recover from the virus that they had and fight it off naturally so anyway I take turmeric now for inflammation as well. And maybe we'll do an episode all about turmeric and the benefits of turmeric and how to get it and so forth. But that helps me with some of like the plantar fasciitis issue because I am not taking ibuprofen anymore unless I absolutely have to. But come to find out the omega-3s actually help with inflammation anyway. Number eight, if you suffer from an autoimmune disease, omega-3s may be your key. And then, okay, here's another one it goes kind of back to the whole brain thing. But if you also suffer from mood swings or any type of mental disorders, so many studies show that omega-3s actually can help with that too. And, you know, it's, it's such a good supplement to take because to think that this Healthline article came up with 17 reasons, health benefits, you know, and some of them say can improve or may improve. But it's enough for me to think they're fairly important because it seems like studies are vetting that out. So I'm all in for, for that kind of stuff. And I don't want, you know, the depression, the anxiety, the mood swings and those kind of mental disorders. I struggle with depression. You know that you've heard my story. And just to think that maybe I was deficient in, in the omega-3s. I was also deficient in the alpha and the omega because I wasn't exactly taking my thoughts captive and I wasn't finding transformation or being transformed to, through the renewing of my mind. So I had an alpha omega three shortage. I have both going on at the same time, but 
anyway, I love to think that that's also making me sharper. And not only can it help with the mental disorders, we could as well talk, and this is the next um, benefit, number 10, about age-related brain and cognitive decline issues, such as Alzheimer's. Omega-3s help with that as, as well. May prevent cancer. Number 12, reduces asthma in children. Number 13, if you've ever heard of fatty liver disease, and apparently this disease is more common than we may think, all right? Omega-3s can reduce the fat there. So, okay, sounds good. And then number 14 may improve bone strength and joint health. I started taking uh, collagen for my joints and you can actually, I vetted out, I did my own little research on that. And then I, I did my own little test and my own trial. And I thought, it says that it takes three months for the collagen to actually make a difference in your joints. Because I had an, I had an automobile accident, I injured a knee and, you know, just kind of badly bruised it. And then I noticed that I also fell later. I tripped in my, I was helping my dad out in his garage. Hey dad, hey mama. Um, I was helping them and what were we doing in the garage? Somehow I slipped over, I tripped over a cord. I had flip-flops on and I literally tripped and I fell on that same bad knee and oh, it was so bruised. And since then I always felt like that knee was, I was a little like on my knee. And so I wanted to, oh my goodness. So you can read about my, my own trial with collagen, which I am still taking to this day, the very same collagen. You can read about it on my website, victoriadwalker.com. Click on the blog link at the top. And then there's a search panel and just put collagen in there. And you'll see the, the I did an art, I wrote a blog before I started it and said, hey, I'm going to try this. And then 90 days later and the results and my own, my own evidence on why it was so important for me. So I love that omega-3s also help with bone strength and joint health. I love that. Number 15 can alleviate menstrual pain. One study even said it was more effective than ibuprofen. Think about this. Think about this. And number 16, it helps you sleep better. We all know that sleep is the foundation to optimal physical overall health. Hands down, it comes in our sleep. Our brain is decluttering and cleaning and organizing and classifying and dumping and ditching and detoxing and you name it while we sleep. So yay, omega-3s actually help us sleep better. And the last one is your skin will love you. All right, that mm, your skin. All right, so there's skin benefits as well. And now you're thinking, okay, I believe you, Victoria. Where do we go from here? How do I get this? Okay, you've heard of fish oil, right? From and that's like fatty fish soy, uh, sources like anchovies, mackerel, and salmon. That's this is one of the most popular dietary supplements in the world, as I said a moment ago, and again, they I gave you the three most important types of alpha of omega-3s fatty acids, but to say the top two, it would be the EPA and DHA, okay? Now, my question to you is, have you ever heard of krill oil? Most of us have heard of fish oil. Many of us have already been taking supplements when it comes to fish oil. But what about krill oil? Krill oil, and this is where my themed um, garments come into play. Krill oil comes from the crustacean, called Antarctic krill, and it can be cold in the Antarctic. Now, do you know that the krill is what so many other sea creatures eat, okay? So some people say, go for the krill because it's really tiny and doesn't live as long. So it reduces the risk of absorbing and having all the toxins. And it's what other fish eat, like salmon, you have to worry about all like, Oh, I don't know what salmon eat exactly. They probably, what do they eat? I don't even want to say it, but, but they can eat, are they predator fish? And so they eat other fish that may have mercury. You got all that issue going on. I don't know. You can probably get a very good source of fish oil. And so I would say go for it no matter what. But some studies suggest, they are not conclusive, that krill oil is actually better. And other folks say, no. Nah, it's just about the same. So it's kind of inconclusive, but I don't mind going with krill oil. That's what I've kind of chosen to do. And here are some of the potential benefits that you get from krill oil. 
one, apparently your body absorbs it a little bit better than fish oil. Krill contains antioxidants, more of them than the regular fish oil does. And it may pack a, you know, a kind of a stronger punch when it comes to your overall health, improving your heart health specifically. And then when we talk about where the krill live, as I was suggesting, they live in kind of pristine waters and they found that it's a more sustainable as an actual food source. Like if we consume that oil, it's a bit more sustainable than say, taking a lot of the salmon and the mackerel and the other fish. But here's the downside, it's pricey. I'm sorry. And that's where I have to say, okay, Victoria, what's it worth to you? Now, I don't know. I, I would probably, and the, the reason I, I got, I started krill oil last year was because of one of my favorite podcasts is the model health show with Stevenson. And he's the one who entered, started talking about krill oil. And I'm like, oh, well, maybe I should do krill oil instead of fish oil. And so it's really up to you and you can get it through, through food sources. So for the ALAs, these top three fatty acids, the ALA omega-3s is found in many plant foods like kale, spinach, uh, soybeans, walnuts, and many seeds such as chia flax and hemp. All right. So you can sprinkle those seeds. If you're um, vegan, you can make flax eggs, you know, because they're when you let the flax seeds sit in a little bit of water, like a like a you know, a tablespoon of, of, of flax to two tablespoons of water, and you let that set up, it kind of gets the gooey structure gumminess of an egg. So a lot of vegans use flax, flax egg, they make flax eggs. I actually prefer a Bob's, is it Bob's Red Mill? I kind of like his egg substitute a little bit better, but flax is probably healthier. I don't know, but at any rate, so you can get your ALAs there, and then the EPA you're going to get in herring, salmon, eel, shrimp, and sturgeon. Some grass-fed animal products such as dairy and meats also contain some EPA. Now DHA is against high amounts in seafood, including all that fatty fish and then algae even in some grass-fed animal products. So the bottom line is that omega-3s, specifically the DHA and the EPA, are stellar brain food. Did you know your brain is made up of 60% fat? Think about that. 60% fat. And there's a lot of water there too. That's why we need our water. And these omega-3s are considered the building blocks for healthy cell membranes, and they support healthy memory, cognition, and emotional well-being. This is the product I use. I'm going to let you zoom in on that. You can see it's called right here. Um, it's called on it, on it, O N N I T. I bought mine on Amazon. I'll put the link in the show notes. I'm an affiliate for Amazon, which means I get like get like a few pennies on purchase that anyone makes through using my link. And but I chose this one only because Stevenson endorsed it. So this is an endorsement of an endorsement. Matter of fact, you would be fascinated by his podcast episode on on krill oil, I think, and on the the omega three. So I would encourage you to go back and watch that. But um, this has 60 cap capsules, I think caplets, capsules, soft gels. So it does have gel. This isn't a beacon then, but, um, and it has 60. And I think I paid like almost $30 for it, which yikes. But this was what I thought. I'll tell you what I thought. I thought, you know what, I'm going to get this and I'm just not going to take the dosage required. So I figured, and tell me if this is true or not. I was taking no fish oil, no krill oil, no supplements. I was not mindful of, now I eat salmon at least once a week. And I have plenty of nuts and seeds that I eat. So I know I'm getting some omega-3s that way, but I feel like I'm not getting enough. Plus I want maximum benefit here. So I don't mind supplementing, but this was my thought. I thought, and on this day that I decided I was going to get it, I'm having none of this. I'm not disciplined about my salmon and my spinach and, you know, my seeds and my nuts and all that. And what if I just took one a week? 
wouldn't that be better than none a week? So that's really the way I came at it. I thought I'm just going to start with one a week and then maybe I'll go to two a week. Because if I go to, if I, if I'm having none and I have one, I've now doubled what I had before. And then if I go to two a week, I've doubled yet again. So is it a little bit better than nothing? That's the way I look at some of this stuff that's kind of healthy and expensive. So to me, that's expensive. But again, it might be worth it because of all the things I could take, I think this type of supplement, again, the world's most popular supplement, fish oil, um, for these omega-3s, I think it's really worth it and beneficial. I'm, I'm totally sold on it. So I keep taking, and I actually try to take more than that a week now, but I did want to share that with you. And I hope that you have found this episode encouraging, enlightening, and you know, when it comes to our thoughts that you're willing to say with me that we are not going to ride through these holidays. We are not going to make excuses and start January 1. You know, it's just like I was, I had uh, my granddaughter over today and I've got so many crafts, so many supplies. What am I saving those for? Are you ever that way with things that you have in your possessions and you're like, one day, one day, I'm going to use this, these special beads for this one day. And I, you know, I stopped thinking that way a long time ago because I'm like, today is the day. Eat on the China today. What are you waiting for? when it comes to your health? What are you waiting for on your thought life? Do you want to live your best life? It starts with your thoughts, with, with what you're telling yourself about any of those areas of your life. That's where it starts. You've got to start there because when you change your thoughts, you will change your emotions and your feelings. Your mindsets will shift and so will your actions. You will actually begin to change. And those old habits you used to have you say goodbye to, and you do it now, even though, okay, it's whatever day in November, who cares? I don't have to have a Monday. I don't have to have the number one associated with a month in order to start doing what's right. So that's what I would encourage you to do. And if you'll do it, I'll do it. And together we will be brain changers that take our community, our families, our community, our churches, we're going to take them by storm because we're changing our brains. We are, we are living our best thought lives. We're taking every thought captive. We're transformed and we have a renewed mind. So look out. There's nothing we can't do with God by our side. And he runs the show. Don't get any kind of false notions on that. I'm not saying this is all about us and what we do. We have a choice. We're 100% responsible but so is God for all the healing that takes place in our bodies and our lives. I'm going to give him all the credit for that. 